simply enroll someone in a methadone program, let them stand in line for hours on a Monday to get their methadone, why wouldn't you put them through withdrawals, give them the IVs they need, the, the um, you know, fluids and whatever vitamins they need to, to withdraw and do that comfortably, and then again, you know, monitor them and see what their condition is, and if they're mentally ill, do not give them drugs, number one. Number two, don't turn someone that is mentally ill, do not give them their money and don't give it to their family because I cannot tell you the horrific... Right, and, and by the way, all of these millions of people who are so addicted to drugs and say they're incapable of working, who do you think it was who picked the grapes, picked the lettuces, who was doing this work in past generations but those on the bottom of the social order? And today, instead of working, we're taking care of them and we are bringing in armies of illegal aliens to do the, the work that others, quote, won't do. But if you read The Grapes of Wrath by the great American writer John Steinbeck, you will see that it was the white man, the, the Oki, who picked the grapes, who lived on the bottom, who lived in these camps, the migrant camps. The Dust Bowl was created in Oklahoma when cyclones went through Texas and Oklahoma, wiped out farms. They didn't turn to the government for help. There was no government help. They got in their rickety pickup trucks and they went west to California where there were scant jobs picking fruit, picking lettuce, picking fruits and vegetables. And whole families came out from the, those areas of the Dust Bowl. And they, 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 they toiled 12, 16, 18 hours a day living in, in, in virtual internment camps that were worse than the Japanese internment camps, by the way. And they built themselves up from the bottom. And today, some of you are listening to the show whose parents or grandparents were uh, uh, vegetable pickers and fruit pickers. They didn't cry about it. They just did the work. And today, instead of using people to do the work who are citizens, we say to them, no, we'll give you money instead. Well, what would you do? Would you pick lettuce in the hot sun or would you take a check and a, and a hot shot from the government, from a government hot shot willing to give you a hot shot? And so the answer is to stop catering to those on the bottom and start healing them and making them go to work and put them in the fields make them do the manual jobs that nobody supposedly will do and then you will have a solution to two problems at once you'll have a solution to the illegal alien problem because the jobs will be given to those people and you'll get the bums off the streets and that's it and i'll be back join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage hey our savage nation is sponsored by swissamerica.com the only company i trust for wealth insurance gold and silver call 800 b-u-i-c-o-i-n they looked at some of the gangs in baltimore they looked at some of the gangs in chicago they looked even in ferguson they got some rough illegal Immigrants in those gangs. They get in and out. You mind if I send them out? Now, if they come from Mexico, do you mind if I send them back to Mexico? No, no. Do you mind if I send them back to Mexico? Okay, those people are out. They're going to be out so fast, your head will spin. <laughs> See, he's the only one using common sense. It's as simple as that. He even got the, the bully, Ramos, to shut his big yap for two seconds who tried to bully his way onto the, to the podium. See, they're so used to running over the wimps in the Republican Party. And they're so enabled by the Democrat, socialist, Islamist uh, machine under Obama that they're used to just running over America like they own it. Now someone comes along, a new sheriff in town, Donald Trump, who says, do you mind if I get rid of the, the, the dangerous gang? So even George Ramos has to say, okay, okay, put him in front of him. So now we're talking about San Francisco. And uh, again, if you're on the Internet or want to go tonight, it's really sickening. You'll see a bum with his pants down. I'm going to be for graphic without being vulgar. And he is openly defecating in the streets of San Francisco. Like a dog. Like a dog. Now, not all homeless are like this, but there's plenty of them who are. They have gotten brazen because the police have been told hands off. Just as there's a spike in, in, in violent crime in New York because the cops can no longer stop and frisk the, the bad ones. They knew who they were. They could see them coming from a mile away. And on the Bloomberg, they were able to pull them over, get the guns out of their hands, and stop the crime. But because the lunatic de Blasio has these uh, the liberal mentality that you can't do this, so crime is spiking. Same in San Francisco. The cops can do the job. They're willing to do the job. But they have been handcuffed by Obama and the trickle-down crime wave. Uh, of Obama, and so now the bums are running with impunity and defecating, urinating. I can't tell you how disgusting the city is. 
I went in and left on Sunday within 30 minutes. I couldn't stand it. It's a filthy place. It's a violent place, and somebody has to do something about it. Not one word from Baba Baxa. Not one word from Nancy Pelosi. I guess she's still on a vacation with the billionaires and millionaires that she hates so much. And then there's the other story that's sickening of, a, a, of the killer at a TV station in Virginia, black guy, by the way, who had fabricated claims of racism, got fired. He comes up with a gun, and he executes two people, and videotapes it and puts it on Facebook. It's it's heartbreaking to watch the, the young woman being killed. And I had to put it up on michaelsavage.com because there's a bigger story here. The bigger story is the crime wave that's running through America under Obama who has basically handcuffed the police. That's the biggest story. It has some racial overtones in it, by the way, which you can figure out on your own. Uh, if you'd like to see some of the racial overtones, you can see it in the video on the left side for InfoWars of a, a white female churchgoer in her 70s who is robbed inside a cathedral uh, by two individuals, uh, let us say, of another uh, race who come in, rob her, and then punch her in the face. Now, I got to tell you what it's like. She's in her 70s, and one of these animals punches her with full force, a uh, flying punch into her head. You know what could kill her? That, to me, is attempted homicide. When they arrest this individual, he should be tried for attempted murder instead of being given a slap on the wrist. Here she is attacked inside a cathedral in a so-called knockout game incident. They're doing it for fun. Why is it being done for fun? Because your president, your former attorney general, your street thug Al Sharpton, has intimid they have intimidated the police. They've told them they're racist for doing their job. We now have a crime wave that's out of control in America. It's, it's tied into the homeless wave which has been with us a lot longer than Obama. It goes back to uh, Governor Brown's father, Edmund G. Pat Brown, who opened up the nut houses and threw, threw them out in the streets. Probably well-meaning, by the way. He was a nice, he was a good governor, and uh, he meant well. He wanted to free, the, free those in the mental hospitals who didn't belong there, and in, instead we got what we have now. And as I read you a report from 1984, even by 1984, the American Psych Psychiatric Association, which was still rational at the time, not infested yet by, uh, by drug addicts and man maniacs, the American Psychiatric Association in 1984 admitted that their humanism, their humanitarianism was o o overdone. They made a mistake. They shouldn't have opened the mental hospitals. They admitted it. And today we're, we're suffering through the homeless scourge. So we have armies of illegal aliens that need to be deported. We have armies of homeless that need to be given nice, clean surroundings in mental hospitals if they're sick, drug treatment if they're sick, and be put to work or not collect a dime. No ticky, no laundry, as they used to say in my day. No welfare, I'm sorry. If you're able-bodied, you go and you get a job. We're not giving you food. We're not giving you clothing. We're not giving you housing. There's plenty of work down in the lettuce fields uh, of the Central Valley. And once these jobs are taken by these people who are living high on the hog, on the milk and honey of the rest of us who provide it, then it will dry up the jobs for the illegal aliens, and they'll have to find work in their own country. That is a double solution. I don't see what's so wrong with this. I know it sounds revolutionary in a time of, in a time of liberalism, but it's commonsensical when you think about it. And again, I spell it all out in Government Zero, my next book, which will be out in October. And yes, it's an important story, and it's important enough for me if to spent one year talking about solutions to all of the problems for America's loss of its borders, language, and culture under the most divisive, evil president imaginable. A man who has done more harm to this country than a foreign army could have done. That's one man's opinion. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, 
Michael Savage. Yeah, all right, we know the rest of the story. Yeah, take a look. That's all. You got the uh, the techies living in million dollar uh, hovels, two million dollar hovels, and then you got hordes of illegals in the street, hordes of uh, homeless. They're crapping in the street, urinating in the street. Russian Hill shooting leaves a tourist wounded. Two suspects from Oakland who were caught by a tax squad as they sped back over the bridge. In other words, there's a crime wave because of liberalism in San Francisco, and no one is willing to admit that it's a philosophical problem as much as anything else. Then we have Donald Trump standing up to the uh, bully of puny vision. I just coined a new phrase, which will be stolen before it leaves my mouth. But you remember we heard it first. I'm known for coining phrases. I've just changed univision, univision to puny vision because puny vision is represented by the puniest man in the in the media, Jorge Ramos. Puny in the sense of emotions, puny in the sense of intellect, puny in the sense of his self-importance. He tried to take over the Trump press conference, and this guy, George Ramos, of puny vision, got pounded into cement, into sand. He thought he would uh, bully him, take him down. He thought he would be a big shot. But the fact of the matter is, if uh, Ramos of puny vision was so brave... He'd shoot his big mouth off in Mexico City uh, like that, or he'd shoot it off in Guadalajara like that. But, you know, they don't do it over there. Here they come over here and they try to do to us what they were afraid to do over there. They try to dump on our candidates who stand up for borders, language, and culture. I have faced it for 20-some-odd years in a minor, not such a minor key. I had marchers outside my radio station a few years ago that were, that were quite frightening. There was an army of them. They've been busted in by the radical left in San Francisco to try to drive me out of, out of the city. They almost succeeded, by the way. Okay, so we have two problems. We have puny vision uh, and Ramos, that interchange. And then we have uh, the bum problem. How would you solve the bum problem? And before we do it, I'd like to play a few more San Francisco songs just to get you in the mood. How about we play Janet McDonald's San Francisco? I love that one because it's so campy. We played Otis Redding sitting on the dock of the bay. Yeah, right. It's not whatever. Did we did we play the animals yet? San Francisco Nights. Let's play the animals. Let's play. Let's play that one. We played this yeah. following program is dedicated to the city and people of San Francisco who may not know it, but they are turn it off. I'm not, I don't have the patience. That's all my the times have changed. Not funny anymore. Now, my favorite is Journey, because that shows me the beauty of San Francisco, which I can still see through the the fogs uh, uh, of the problems. But I don't want to play it. I want to take your calls. KSFO, Jeffrey, you live in San Francisco. What's your solution to the, hum uh, the homeless bum problem? Yes, Dr. Savage. First off, I just want to tell you I appreciate you taking the time every day to let everybody in America know what needs to be done. And I appreciate you speaking to the youth. I am a rarity. I'm 31 years old. And there's hardly uh, anybody uh, around. All well and good, well and good. But what would what would your solution be? Uh, my solution would be, first off, to eliminate all these benefits. You know, I went down to the welfare office to study, and I, I picked up the packet to see what it would require. If you're oh. an illegal, it says in the first line, are you an undocumented? If you are, don't bother filling out the rest of this. Take it to the window. If you're an American citizen, you have to provide everything that you can imagine in terms of you know, proving what your mm -hmm. worth is. You have so to the country is upside down. We've all catered to puny vision, and we're afraid of puny vision. And as a result, the illegals go to the head of the line, and American citizens go to the back of the bus. Yes, sir. And you're required as an American citizen to fill out like a 30-page packet. And if you don't have everything available, they'll deny you. But if you're an illegal, they immediately give you financial aid to go to school. They immediately mm -hmm. give you benefits that day for your children. It doesn't matter how many you have. And uh -huh. if you're an American citizen, you're denied, and you may have to wait weeks. Whereas it specifically states on the paper here in Sacramento at the health office, are you an illegal undocumented? If so, please go to the window. You don't have to fill out any you know, other... How many years ago did I start calling the DMV, the Department of Mexican Voting? When I started saying that 10 years ago, people called me every name under the sun. You and I both know that the motor vehicle bureaus were turned into motor voter uh, bureaus by uh, Janet Reno first and Janet Napolitano, and the DMV is in fact the Department of Mexican Voting. That is how a corrupt one-party system has emerged in California and New York for that matter. Yes, sir. 
And without a doubt, like I went to renew my driver's license with my grandmother last month who has alcohol.